already uh, Jack360 Fitness uh, with our second Facebook Live video, and I posted it on our members forum and on my personal page. What do you guys want to hear about? You know, what topics are important to you? What's your, you know, the big factor that's holding you back from increased fat loss? And this is the number one topic you guys told me to talk about. So we are going to be chatting about hormones and fat loss. So just the hormones that are mainly responsible for fat loss, and we're going to tell you guys the big picture. So we're going to kind of cut out all the crap, we're going to cut out all the meat, and we're just going to make sure that you guys know exactly what the big picture is, and then what the hell to do about it, alright? So we're not going to talk about academics, we're not going to talk about anything else like that. I'll post all the, the links and pages and everything else in the comments so you guys can do some informed reading on it. But I'm going to go over uh, hormones that you need to know about for better improved fat loss. Okay, so let's get started. I'll kind of tell you what we're going to do. So we're going to talk about the hormones here tell you the big picture about it, and then what you actually have to do today, not tomorrow, today, to improve fat loss by controlling the big three, okay? So there's, there's three main hormones that are gonna really dictate whether you're in a fat burning state or a fat storage state. Your body kinda is like left or right. It's hard to stay in the middle. So we go through times of the day and times of the week that we're in a fat burning mode and then a fat storage mode. So obviously if you have fat loss goals, you want to be in fat burning mode as much as possible. Okay? It's hard to kind of stay in the middle with hormones. So leptin has been, it's kind of like the new hormone on the block. Obviously it's been there forever, but new research and new studies are coming out to really, really hammer in that leptin is kind of our commander in chief when it comes to fat loss. So he kind of dictates everything else and he doesn't really get told what to do by any of their hormones. So he's the guy at the top that kind of triples down everything else. So leptin is kind of like your, your hunger hormone. And it tells your body to like eat, not eat, store, or burn. Okay, so it's kind of like your thermostat. Now the big picture guys is if leptin is low, your metabolism lowers to match it, okay? So leptin is released naturally in our body when we have a nice maintenance level of leptin. So food coming in, leptin is saying, hey, you're eating that, let's go do something with that energy and let's pull it out somewhere, okay? Let's make sure that your metabolism is nice and high, all right? So that's when food is in, leptin is in. When food is down, leptin is down as well. So, if you are in a constant caloric deficit, and if you're a constant chronic dieter that more or less runs like 1,000 to 1,500 calorie diets all the time, your leptin is also going to be chronically low. Now, what happens when leptin is super low is that your body kind of gets into a restrictive mode. It holds on to all the food that it has and puts it into fat storage. Okay, so it's saving it for a rainy day. It's kind of like fight or flight. It doesn't trust you that more food is coming in, so it's saving it in the bank accounts, thinking that it's going to lose its job later. Okay, so it's putting it into savings, it's putting it into the freezer, it's putting it into storage. So if you are running in a caloric deficit for too long, your leptin levels will be chronically low as well, and your metabolism, your basal metabolic rate, will just kind of go down, down, down. So for instance, me, I weigh 180 pounds, my basal metabolic rate is about 1,900 calories. Your basal metabolic rate more or less means like the calories that you need just to kind of survive a typical day in everyday life. Now, if I am a chronically dying and I'm eating below my 1,900 calories, well, my metabolism is gonna try to like balance that out. It's not gonna burn or overburn. It's not gonna, you know, starts to eat away at the body, so what it does is it starts to store. So my basal metabolic rate is 1900, well if I'm chronically eating 1500, my metabolism is going to match it. So what happens? Weight loss, plateaus, fat loss, plateaus, you start to feel like a pile of crap. So, and then what you do, a lot of people do, is they cut calories even more. They go, well if I lost weight at 1500, maybe I have to lose weight at 1200. Well that's good for about a week, week and a half, and then weight loss, plateaus, fat loss, plateaus and then your metabolism kind of comes down to it. So what we have to do is we have to make sure your metabolism, your internal fat burning engine is as high as possible. So we need to make sure our leptin levels are matching it. So one of the worst things somebody can do for weight loss and fat loss is chronically diet, is to be in a calorie deficit for way too freaking long. 
okay? So, when you are eating below your means, your, your leptin levels are just gonna be all out of whack. So every now and then, you have to have a balanced nutrition plan, but that's why we really, really encourage reset meals here at 360. So on all of our fat loss diets, all of our weight loss diets, we more or less like force our clients to have one cheat meal or reset meal per week. So leptin goes back up and skyrockets back up, just temporarily, right? Just for the day or two. So your metabolism fires back up as well. So we kind of have like a, a give or a take kind of relationship with leptin and your metabolism. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is that if leptin levels are low chronically, your methasia metabolic rate is also going to be chronically low. So your biggest ally for fat loss, your biggest internal fat burning furnace, it's going to be down. So how to improve fat loss, don't be in a calorie deficit for too long, okay? In and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, and then don't chronically diet, right? Your body's going to figure out that you need you know, 1,500 calories to lose weight, and then it's going to need 1,200 calories to lose weight, and what that's called is metabolic slowdown syndrome. So you, a lot of chronic dieters, a lot of bodybuilders, female physique, bikini athletes, everything else, they get into that rut where they went into a diet for 12 to 26 weeks, and then all of a sudden, you know, they were losing weight at 2,000 calories a day before, now they have to eat 1,100 calories a day to lose weight, and it's just a bad, vicious cycle, so don't do it, okay? Eat a nice, balanced nutrition plan, make sure that if you are dieting for fat loss and running the deficit, that you throw in a reset or a cheat meal, a planned and structured cheat meal, but once a week. Yeah, clear as mud? Okay, so the second hormone that's really, really important when it comes to fat loss is insulin, okay? Insulin gets a bad rep. Insulin like only kind of comes into the conversation as when we're talking about like fruity pebbles and cornflakes, okay? So when we have high glycemic carbohydrates or too much carbohydrates in general, our insulin levels skyrocket, okay? Insulin is the hormone that kind of uses carbs, converts it into energy. So obviously when carbs are present in our bloodstream, liver, kidneys, in our guts, insulin has to come up and match it. So it's more or less the guy that kind of converts it into energy, all right? But insulin, when it's doing its job, when carbs are there, insulin's there, and then when carbs are down, insulin is down, okay? So we want insulin to be there when carbs are there, but then also to get the hell out of our bodies and our bloodstream when carbs aren't, okay? But what happens when people eat too many high glycemic carbohydrates or too many carbs in general for their, their maintenance is that insulin never leaves, right? If we're chronically snacking on bad, crappy foods, processed foods, you know, just, you know, the white breads of the world and that kind of stuff, insulin never leaves. And that's when it gets bad, okay? Insulin is good when it's there temporarily, but then we want it to get the hell out. Because your body can never, ever, 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 ever turn into a fat burning mode when insulin is present. So when insulin is present in your bloodstream, your body will use that as energy first rather than getting into your central fatty acids, okay? So that's like your internal fat storage. It's always gonna use the easiest route your body is in a very efficient machine. So when insulin is in the bloodstream, that's what it's gonna use for energy, and it's gonna use those carbs that are present temporarily. But you have to get that crap out of you, get the insulin levels back down so your body goes back into a fat burning mode for energy, not just a quick and easy route to go into uh, the insulin. What I always kind of use as an example for the clients is that you'll never go down to the freezer to grab something that's already in the fridge. Right? You're always gonna grab what's convenient, what's fresh, what's right in front of you first. That's insulin, he's the guy that's right there. But once the fridge is done, then you're gonna go down to the, to the freezer and grab something. I hope that makes sense, little analogy. Okay. So what we need to do guys to improve fat loss is we need to balance carbohydrates and then if we are eating carbs all day, aim for better quality ones, okay? So a lower glycemic carbohydrate. So choosing a good natural rice versus a white bread Obviously getting off like the, the candies and the high sugar coffees and that kind of stuff. No brainers, so you guys know what to do. But we need to balance carbs so we can balance insulin. So carbs in, insulin in, carbs out, insulin out. Carbs in, insulin in, carb, carb, carbs out, insulin out, okay? So again, we want insulin there because it's super efficient on making energy out of carbs and regulating that in our bloodstream, but then we want it to do its job and get the hell out. Get out, get out, get out. Okay, so then we can get back into a fat burning mode. So balance your carbs, aim for lower glycemic stuff, and make sure that you're not overdoing it on carbs. 
Okay? You don't need as many as you think. The third guy, and this is kind of controversial on if this guy is really, really important or not, but I think so. Alright? So we're going to make some people mad, but I think that cortisol is super important when it comes to fat loss. It's kind of indirectly responsible. So cortisol is your stress hormone. He's your fight or flight. So when something environmentally, physically, emotionally, mentally stressed happens to you, cortisol is jacked up. Okay? Again, it's a good thing. It's a natural response. So he's the hormone that tells you fight or flight. So he's the guy that kind of says like, all right, are we going to stand our ground against this bear? Or are we going to hot tail it in the woods and try to climb a tree? He's the one that's putting you into that, that, that panicked state. Okay, now that's really good on a, on a temporary scale because you can have a huge adrenaline rush, you can make smarter decisions, you know, you can, you can do a whole bunch of things when adrenaline is pumping in your blood and when cortisol is there. But if we're in a heightened stress state all the time, your body isn't going to perform properly at all, okay? So imagine waking up every day and thinking that a bear is chasing you and then going out for lunch and thinking a bear is chasing you and out for dinner and a bear is chasing you and going to bed and a bear is chasing you. So your body is going to be in a heightened stress state. Now when your body is in a heightened stress state, when cortisol is super high in your body, your body kind of says, everything else, chill out. Don't do the regular functions until we figure this situation out. So it kind of like does lockdown on the body and says all my other regulations of hormones and fat loss and energy expenditure and all that other stuff, that can take a back seat because I don't care about burning fat right now, I care about running away from that freaking bear. That's what I care about, okay? So it's awesome for temporary stress. So when we work out, you know, when we go out for those sprints, uh, you know, when we have that job interview, whatever else, you want it there, but then when that situation and scenario is done, you want cortisol out so you can get back to real living. So when cortisol is constantly there, your body's regulatory mechanisms to either burn fat or store fat shut off. So your body just turns into a fat storing machine because it thinks that Armageddon is happening all freaking day. It thinks that the bear is chasing them all freaking day. Okay? So your body is just going to say, hey, I don't know if I'm going to be here. Everything tighten up, go into that, that hibernation state. So fat storage is going to go through the roof. Okay? So cortisol, again, is really good for short-term stress. Now, I, I don't mean that just as a like relationship stress or stress with your boss. It's physical, mental, emotional, environmental stress too. Okay? So when you work out, when your body is against resistance and it's tough to work out or tough to do those sprints or whatever else, and you're struggling, cortisol comes up, jacks up your adrenaline, kind of puts everything else in the back burner and lets you focus on the task at hand, right? But then after your workout, you don't want that pepped up feeling. You want that crap to get out so then your body can get back to regulatory hormone production. So fat storage can stop, fat burning can start. So guys, if you are constantly in a state of stress, either physical, emotional, mental, relationship, whatever else, if you find yourself stressed all day, you're gonna find yourself storing fat all day. And then that's a vicious cycle, right? Because then you're stressed about gaining fat. And then you gain fat because you're stressed. And it's just a bad, bad cycle, okay? So you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta take care of yourself. Take time off, you know, say you love lover to your partner or your husband or whatever else, you gotta get that stress off your plate, all right? So you gotta manage it. So I don't mean like, you know, lose, quitting your job and quitting relationships and moving to a, an abandoned island in Thailand. That's not it. But you have to take the stress you have and retarget it, remanage it, and just have an overall better understanding of what stress is. So we tell our, our clients not to just like get rid of everything that's stressful in your life, is that find another outlet for it. Okay, so retarget that energy. So when you're stressed, that cortisol is there, you're in a heightened state of panic. Well, either you can stand there and panic like this, or you can go work out, or go for a run, or hit the bag boxing, or you can go be productive at work, or something like that. Start to redirect your energy, guys. When that happens, you're gonna get into the groove, cortisol will drop, fat storage will drop, in other words, fat burn will start to increase back again, and there you have it. Okay guys, I know we're going on like what, 10, 15 minutes, Langs? I think so. Yeah, oh, I just want to say thank you, and, and Langs, you can say hi as well. Hi! <laughs>
the camera hasn't been floating the entire time. Um, but guys, uh, if you're watching this live, if you have any comments, let me know. Uh, we can answer them right here, or I'll be posting this uh, this video on our Facebook and, and Twitter and YouTube and all that fun jazz, and then I'll be getting back to comments later on down the road as well. So if you have any questions about leptin, insulin, cortisol, what the big picture on those big three are, and then what the heck do we actually have to do about it to improve fat loss, let me know, okay? So I'll, uh, I'll post some articles I've written over the years, uh, post some links to kind of give you more informed reading, and rather than listening to me just blabble about it, all right? Uh, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Uh, again, Jack of 360 Fitness, if you guys need any more you know, questions answered on health and fitness, we're the people to do it. Okay, thanks guys, back to you soon.